Maggie Mangan and uh, at the moment I, I live in Australia and I've lived in Australia for most of my life but I was born in England and my parents are Irish. Yeah I didn't I did know about it before I went to live in Mexico but I didn't know very much about it. Um, I suppose I had um, I, I suppose I had an idea that it was um, more of just a, um, you know, similar to just a, a party type, um, Halloween type thing before. So, I, because when I was at, um, when I was teaching at Churchill College, um, you know, the I asked the students to tell me what, uh, what it meant, what Day of the Dead meant. And, uh, and they explained to me that it was much more, it was much more, it was much closer to a, um, like a religious event in that it was a belief in that on this one day that you, that there was a, a like a gap between the living and the dead where you could actually talk to relatives who had uh, who had died mm -hmm. and you could share a meal or you know share some time with them um, which made me uh, feel that that was just um, such a wonderful way of remembering you know not just um, not just sort of remembering whenever you think about these people, but actually sort of celebrating their life, celebrating your relationship with those people and what you had with them. And, um, and so, and it's much closer to, I think in, with, in the Irish tradition in my parents were Irish. And so I was brought up in the Catholic tradition where on, um, around about the 31st, 30th and the 31st, it was All Souls Day and All Saints Day. And on All Souls Day, we would um, go to church and we, you'd pray for those people who had died. But the it always seems such a solemn occasion, <laughs> you know. And um, in Mexico, it was much more a celebration of... Um, your relationship with those people who had died. So I stayed uh, for two years in Mexico. So I had two um, Day of the Deads. Um, on one occasion, um, I went to, because uh, I lived uh, near um, Coyoacan, and so uh, on one occasion we went to um, we went to Coyacan and uh, it was absolutely packed and we sort of joined in the celebrations in Coyacan. But there was another occasion where, and I can't remember where we went, but we went to a student from the school invited us to go and see, um, it was an exhibition of different altars um, that had been created. Or yeah, not really huge ones. It was just more or less. It was like, a, like the neighbourhood, right. uh, just this particular area, um, and they had, uh, and they did it every year. That they just had this big warehouse type of barn area, and they would just put up these different um, altars. The offerings, and, right? Yeah, but you could walk around and you could talk to the people who had um, made these altars and talk to them and ask them, you know, about their family. And it was really, I found that, I thought that was the, the best year. I really enjoyed that. Right. I have to 
say that the experience that I've had with the Day of the Dead has changed my attitude towards death. Um, I think that before I came to Mexico and before I learned about the Day of the Dead, my attitude towards death was one of Sadness. the unknown. <laughs> you know, it was just, I didn't know. It was, a, and there was a fear. What's going, you know, when you die, um, how can there be no you anymore? How can you no longer exist? And uh, I suppose going through existential, um, you know, worries about uh, what's the meaning of life if we just stop, you know. Um, but I think that now having experienced the Day of the Dead, even if, you know, like even if there is no afterlife, um, there's no fear. I don't have that fear anymore. It's like that's... Um, uh, Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, you know. All right. <laughs> that's right. And I think that um, I think that that's something that uh, my my youngest daughter Hannah, she's actually uh, married to um, a guy from Mexico. So <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> no, he's he was born in Mexico but grew up oh. in the United States. So she met him in Los Angeles. Right. Um, but I think that that's something that I would, that would be something that I would love to happen for my family to have, you know, one day of the year where they just, um, so, you know, they just sit down and have a chat with me, you know. Right. <laughs> Australia has Australia is um, very influenced by the United States, okay. so the they uh, follow Halloween um, very much like the United States, where they go, you know. And this is a this is only recently, I suppose, over the last um, you know twenty years, I suppose they've started to introduce um, American. Um, uh, traditions where they go trick or treating and do all that type of thing, but the uh, but the costuming, the Day of the Dead, is becoming more popular uh, as a uh, fashion, I suppose, around that time. Yeah. yeah, but there's no, but for most of them, there's no understanding of the meaning behind the, you know, the the costumes and and they don't, they've got no understanding of Day of the Dead. Um, living in Mexico, I mean, I had visited Mexico before, um, but living there and uh, you really get an understanding of the beliefs and right. and you know the and they make sense you know right. they make as much sense as anything else and you get a deeper understanding of the um the way that people think in mexico i think through this tradition of the day of the dead there's a much um uh really a, values now Sort of. It's got to do with family values, but also um, the, the uh, I don't know what the word is, but there's a, there's a sort of, there's a lack of fear of living. You recklessness? Know, the, <laughs> <laughs> recklessness, maybe? Are we reckless? No, not really recklessness, but there's, there's a sort of contentment with uh, life. With there's, life. Uh, I suppose it's the opposite of recklessness. There's an idea that, um, you know, life will go on after death. So there's no point in trying to pack everything into life because you're going to, everything will go on afterwards anyway. All right. And well, I was in Mexico when they, when they filmed that um, right. scene for the James uh, Bond movie. 
and uh, I was I was actually going one evening to see a concert in the middle of the city and we were running late and we ran down this road where they had all the big puppets mm -hmm. you know right. lined up ready to go on this uh, to do filming the next day um, and uh, I think when that film came out I was in Australia and uh, there was there were I had I had you know there was a little bit of um, I wasn't sure about the film I've I felt that it had taken something that was so personal um, and so deeply traditional and changed it you know they they, they they had never been a big parade in Mexico City before that film came out and uh, now that there is um, which is not a bad thing you know like it is great to celebrate culture um, uh, like that um, but uh, as long as the personal, personal relationship to that uh, cultural tradition don't get lost <laughs> They think it's just about dressing up and and you know partying and you know that everyone just uh, wears paints their face and you know <laughs> so um, there's not much of a, an understanding among the general population. that was such a great uh, outpouring of independence you know of being and it get you know like it's a really public display I think one of the things that I reckon uh, that I uh, when I first went to Mexico was that uh, the thing that struck me was how um, even though you're close geographically to the United States how very how very separate you are from the United States and have uh, strongly held on to your culture and strongly held on to your independence from the United States, um, which I found was admirable. Um, and uh, and I think that that you know the Independence Day of Grito was just the most uh, um, wonderful collective uh, shout about you know like we are we are not. Um, anybody except us we are you know we are Mexicans we are not uh, and I thought that was a that's a fantastic shout out about we are independent and we have our own cultures and be, and again you know that celebrates your culture that celebrates you as being unique and not part of any other culture Yeah, absolutely. And I have, um, you know, because my father died um, when he was quite young. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, like, and it's something that uh, I always, I, I do now, you know, like I do, I get, you know, his photo out and I make this little, you know, thing for him. And it's a way for me to reconnect with my relationship with him because I was quite young when he died. And uh, so I miss so much, you know, of my life with him. So that's the, um, you know, so that's brought, uh, I suppose the Day of the Dead tradition has brought him back into my life very much. That's nice. Well, I think what I said before was, um, you know, about uh, what has changed is that uh, I've got a very clear, I've got a much better uh, relationship with death, I suppose. Um, I don't see it as such a tragic um, uh, full stop. Uh, I don't see it as a waste of life. Uh, so I've got a much clear, I've got a, a much better relationship. I feel happier about death, if you want to put it that way. Um, and uh, I have, uh, I suppose the other thing is I have 
um, because of the fact I've got a much better understanding of, I feel I have a much better understanding of Mexico and of the, uh, the Mexican people. There were some things that I was surprised about. Um, the, the, you know, the, when I first came to Mexico, the idea of, uh, it, especially in Mexico City, it's, it's so much more a European city um, than the traditional, you know, when the, the caricature of a Mexican um, is of uh, a peasant, you know, with a sombrero and, uh, you know, <laughs> there are so many ridiculous stories stereotypes and one of the things that people said to me when I was coming to Mexico when I got a job they uh, people were saying um, be careful. Oh my God, it's so dangerous be careful you know and um, and I recognized that there were two things I recognized you can you can be killed anywhere in the world you can be attacked anywhere in the world um, uh, it just depends on where you are you know there are certain places in in australia that i wouldn't go to late at night um and there are certain places in mexico that you wouldn't go to late at night on your own um and you just avoid those places um, i i really found it you know like i discovered more of the cultural side to mexico um and the and was struck by the intelligence uh, of the students that I taught, not just as far as, <laughs> well, not just as far as, you know, like read, being able to analyze an, a, a text, but intelligence as in having a very much a, an understanding of the way the world works, you know, more of a global view uh, and being very confident in themselves and who they are. Um, All right.